It's official. The Pioneer DDJ Rev7 has been announced to much fanfare, including myself. I think it might be the controller of the year. But while the general public is over the moon, there's another contingent that has had issue with it. Or more importantly, legitimately prefers the Rain 1 over the Rev7. When asked why, people have answered, I just prefer the simplicity of it. Wait, what? But then I started to think about it. There may be something to this. There was a time not too long ago where DJs only rocked two turntables and a mixer. No effects, no cue points, no sync. I had a whole video shot and edited it, breaking down every detail, but I wanted to approach this differently. So this is the argument for why the Rain 1 is still a viable option for the DJ community. Roll credits. The major benefits of Serato are found on both products, Scratch Bank, Serato FX, Instant Start, Pad Modes, Although for whatever reason, Rain continues to leave off the secondary pad function decals. So you're left guessing what they do. The pads are also difficult to see in sunlight, but it does have a temporary Q button that the Rev lacks. Library features, auto loop, effects paddles, pitch bend, BPM ranges from plus eight all the way to plus 50, the break effect, the similarities go on and on. One major difference is in the search function where the rain has a touch strip always accessible and the ref has a jog search by holding the shift and moving the jog forward or backwards. Both get the job done, but it's definitely easier on the rain. Where the devices differ are where they both have separate strengths and weaknesses. First off, the rain is fully capable of standing on its own too. I mean, four legs. And this allows for a very clean setup as you can tuck the cables underneath the deck. Also, Having the extra height means you can set a stand under the deck. With the Rev, choosing not to have feet, you have to leave the stand on the outside of it. People who prefer the computers in the middle, which I don't, may find the need for additional space frustrating. The Rain 1 is slightly smaller and slightly lighter, giving it the ability to fit in current hard and soft back cases without any customization. Speaking of cases, Anyone with a love for sliders may want to stay away from the Rev7 as the pitch faders are in the back. This is probably the most polarizing part of the controller. A lot of people prefer the pitch to be on the sides as are on the Rain 1 and other Pioneer DJ controllers. While I grew up with battle style upper pitch control, I can understand why some people have trouble with it. However, I learned to adjust, so they probably could too. My favorite parts of the Rain 1 are the parts that most people overlook, and that's the ins and outs. Rocking all XLRs on both mics, main outputs, and booths relieves a lot of potential pitfalls that you may have if you don't have your quarter inch cable for the booth and the mic. One type of cable in your bag is all you need. Not to mention, a lot of videographers prefer to take audio out from XLR. So for people not using the booth, this is a perfect out for them. Real quick, I did forget about this one thing, so I wanna make sure that it's in the video, but the Rev7 does have its own external power supply with its own external brick. Comparatively speaking, you have the Rain 1 with an internal power supply. So for a lot of people, they're gonna prefer having that standard power in the event that they've forgotten their cord, where they can always use any standard power cord that they probably have in their bag already. Now, Pioneer stated that this is supposed to remove the ground hum and all unnecessary noises, but a lot of people do prefer having that consistency of that traditional power input. The Rain 1 also sports two independent mic controls with their own two band EQs. The aux in on the Rain also doubles as the mic two, which means you're able to EQ that line in, adding another usable channel. Now it's not all sunshine because where the rain lacks are in the audio faders and the crossfader contour. The crossfader's fine, but the main issues with the fader is it's not very sharp. No matter how much you adjust it in the Serato settings or in the manual contour settings or in the rain one settings, it's never left me with that wow feeling. The up faders, however, are probably the weakest link of the controller. They work, but they are definitely not really good for if you're a scratch DJ. Yeah, you can make it work, but the resistance is pretty strong on them, so you're gonna have to really work for them. 
on most mixers, including the Rain 70, the Rain 72, the Pioneer S7, and the Rev 7, the controls are all on the top. On the one, they are on the front panel, which I've always found to be annoying. It's too far from the channel cues. They really should be together. Now let's move over to the mixer and the mixer settings are fine, albeit slimmer than I'd like it. It's a cramped design with no displays anywhere on the decks alerting you of status. This forces you to look at your computer more than I think is necessary. But if you're old school and just wanna rock that two turntables and a mixer with no displays, BPM counters, FX displays, you will feel right at home. But Serato effects. Now there's nothing really to say about this. The Rain 1 should have had internal effects. This is a huge oversight in my opinion for a controller at this price point. Okay, so someone commented on my original post that I never spoke in detail about the platter feel. So let's do that right now. Both platters come with acrylic tops and they both do a good job. I've said in the past that the Rain 1 acrylic feels and holds better than the Rain 12. The grooves on the Rev are different. They stick to your fingers a little better. Maybe it's because the lines are not the same around the platter. They have breaks like real records do. So I prefer the Pioneer feel, although it's just a slight difference. Because of the nature of classic platters, you have many options at your disposal with the Rain 1. Not limited to just making your own. You can stick with acrylic or go vinyl, or you can make your own out of traditional seven inch records or get them made. There's a lot of companies making vinyl and slip mats. Of course, when one stops, the other begins as not only can you customize the outside of the jogs in the Rev, but the inside too. And you can add your own logo or whatever you want in the displays. You can't do that in the Rain 1. Now, about the platters, specifically the way you manually adjust pitch. If you're an old school turntable person, you'll likely use a spindle to slow and speed up the track. This can't be done on the Rev. I can honestly say that after years of using the spindle for making any type of adjustments, Moving over to phase was a very difficult thing to do. I got used to it, but it definitely took a while. While the Rain 1 doesn't have platter displays, it does keep that classic 1200 design, a tried and true design that's been used by the best of the best for over 50 years. And while I don't personally have doubts about the Rev 7, it remains to be seen whether its design will withstand the test of time. Speaking of lasting, I would be remiss to not speak of the build quality of the Rain 1. Yes, it's an all metal design, but it's not without its quality control issues. I've been using it for a year and I've had issues ranging from random USB connection problems, platters arbitrarily deciding not to spin or to spin way faster than they're supposed to, and a persistent headphone jack issue. None of these things have ever completely failed me, but people should know what they're getting into. Your mileage may vary, but do your due diligence in the forums and see if any of these things are deal breakers for you. Oh, last thing, sound. They both sound very, very good. Both the main outputs and the mic preamps, no issue with either one of them. Look, I would consider the Rev 7 near perfect, but there's a lot of people that don't need all the bells and whistles. And for those people, the Rain 1 is still an amazing alternative. Not to mention, cheaper at $15.99 and likely around $1,200 used, there's a lot of bang for your buck. You won't see any price breaks for a Rev 7 for a long while. I know for some people, it sounds weird what I'm saying, but there is a huge contingent of people that find the Rev 7 overkill and prefer the simplicity of the rain. Also, the pitch fader for some is a major issue. So which one is better? Well, in my opinion, the Rev 7, but the Rain 1 is still a very good controller, and if you own one, or were considering one, you don't have to feel buyer's remorse. Buy what you need, you're going to enjoy either controller equally. Okay guys, I think I've hit everything. If you have any questions, put them down in the comments below. Uh, let me know what you're thinking, let me know what your plan is for the future, and uh, you know, we'll talk about it. And you know, that might spark another idea for another video and uh, we'll, we'll keep on pushing from there. I hope this video was useful. If you found the video useful, hit that like button. If you found that video really useful, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you follow me on the Instagrams and the Twitters. Get on my Discord, because that's where we're talking about all things Cleveland Terry. Guys, girls, always a pleasure. If I don't talk to you later, we'll talk soon. Peace.